Hello, and welcome to Two Dancing Clams. This is a tutorial video showing how to control spline handles and geometry nodes, and how to view spline handles in procedural geometry. At the end, I include an example of how procedural curves can be used with 3D meshes to create columns. Meshes created in this way are far more efficient and clean than what can be achieved by, for example, distorting a high-poly cylinder with set position and math. This video was born out of the tedium of modeling columns in the traditional way. Procedural generation is generally easier, but I had to develop some techniques for dealing with spline handles. These are novel enough to share. To minimize complexity, I really only scratched the surface of the effects it is possible to create with procedurally generated curves. In particular, all of the examples here are symmetric, but some incredible results are possible when you introduce asymmetry something that would be even more difficult to achieve in traditional modeling. I was also frustrated with my inability to see the curve handles generated inside geometry nodes, so I developed a viewer for them, which is also presented here. If there is a built-in way to view the control points and handles of a curve generated in geometry nodes, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to get started by turning on screencast keys and node wrangler. That being done, go ahead and drag up this and open some geometry nodes. Let's go ahead and create the circle we're going to use. When you drag out to space from this resolution, it automatically hooks it up to the group input and creates a entry for it. Go over here, we can see that entry, and now we can modify it at will. The reason I did this is because I'm going to want to use this number of points around the curve multiple times in the node group. Now we want to set the spline type to Bezier so we have separate handles from the control points. I also want to set the handles to free so we can manipulate them. Uh, auto is useful too in different circumstances, just not what we want to do right here. Now I want to do something that's a little bizarre. I'm going to take the points for the current circle and move them to a new circle. The reason for this is I want to have the control points and the handles close to each other. It is much easier to use the same algorithm just to move the control point and the handles to where I need them rather than figure out where the existing points are and then try to set the handles close to them. Take the number of radians in a circle and divide it by the resolution. This divides a circle into the number of points that we've decided our resolution is going to be. Multiply this by the index to get the correct angle for each index along the circle. And now the cosine. What we're going to do is take a point at 0, 0, 0 and move it out along the current angle to a fixed distance. To do this, I need the parametric equation for a circle, which the x value equals the radius times the cosine, y value equals the radius times the sine. And I'm going to use this a few times in the setup, so I'm going to create a group for it. This value here is actually the angle, so let's give it a more fitting name. And as I said before, we want the sine as well. And these two will be multiplied by the radius, or the distance, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it distance. This gives us a, a position. Now we can combine these back. We don't want this value as the output. Don't need it. We want to output a position. What we want to do is take an existing position, move it a certain distance along a certain angle, and then output that. We'll call this position 2. And just in case there is a z value we need to preserve, let's do that as well. Get back out of there, give this a meaningful name. 
I'm going to leave the position at 0, 0, 0 because everything is moving from the center outwards in this example. Uh, other times I use this node group, and I use this node group a lot. Um, the position could be anything. It could also be like the result of another move position by angle. You can daisy chain the extincts together. If you're, for example, forming a randomly wandering branch on a tree. And the distance also doesn't matter for now. I'm going to leave it at 0.5. And now we have changed our circle into a slightly different circle, but that is really what I intend to do. When we create the handles, this might make more sense. Now I want to position the handles. What I want to do is take the angle we're using for the control point and modify it a little bit for the handle points. So we'll do that with a add and a subtract. So we'll take the primary angle and subtract a certain amount from it for one handle, and we'll add a certain amount to it for the other handle. Now we'll do the same trick I did below, take a coordinate at 0, 0, 0, and move it out along an angle to a certain distance. And I'll add a way to control the distance. and I'll call it handle distance. Now we need to apply these to the handles. And you can start to see the effects. absolutely love this. Now you can see why not being able to see the handles was so vexing for me. Um, you can even like you can even apply the geometry nodes or try to convert it to a curve or I tried about a dozen different things and nothing would take this curve and show me the control handles. So while we're talking about that let's go ahead and do the handle viewer. So let's go ahead and accomplish that. I want an instance on points. And we'll join this up with the existing geometry so we can see both. Just for tidiness sake, I'm going to make this a group as well and get rid of all the variables we don't need. I'll create a little circle to mark the position. Let's make it little and let's make it under the control of the outside. Go back out real quick. and change it to something more reasonable. And let's give this a name, I'll call it Spline Viewer. I don't know about you, but this is definitely going into my asset library. So that's it for the control points. Now let's do the handles. Let's create a join geometry so we can see both of them. I'm just go ahead and duplicate this. Control Shift D to duplicate with noodles attached. For this one, I'll go ahead and use four. Now what I want is to put a marker at the position of the left handle. So I will get that. Now the problem is I only know it on this side and I want to know it on this side. And the other problem is I can't use capture attributes with it. Not sure why, just didn't work. But what I can do is use my favorite store named attributes. And what we'll do with that is a set position on the other side. This will need to be a vector. Grab a set position. Now you can see our left handle. Let's do exactly the same thing with the right. And there are both of our curve handles. Make them different. And it's also nice to fill in these circles so you can tell which is the control point and which are the handles. And now we can really see what's going on. So we'll come back out here. Now when we adjust these handle angles. You can see the handles move and you can see the effect of the handles moving. 
So usually for the profile curve, you don't want to have an overlap like that. It makes for some really ugly geometry. Maybe it's useful in certain situations, but uh, generally not. So if, when I'm doing a curve to mesh using one of these profiles, um, I'll try to have non-overlapping geometry. So cool. So much more fun than, than uh, trying to model these. Now I do a lot with 2D Blender and a laser cutter, but most people are really only interested in the 3D results. So let's go ahead and do a curve to mesh. Start with a line. Give it some height. Do a curve to mesh. Use this as our profile curve. And there we go. A column that took forever to carve. The other thing you might want to do is um, Bezier's can sometimes provide a lack of detail. So you can fix that. change you get to NURBS. In this case it didn't make much difference, it depends on what you're doing, but if you see obvious joins in the in a mesh, uh, a lot of times this will soften that up a lot. I am really jazzed at the possibility of combining curves I can control with meshes for all kinds of effects. I hope you got something out of watching this video. I'll see you next time.